Alright guys, national championships a little less than two hours away. And you got the number one seed Duke taking on number five seed Cinderella and the Hoosiers of but the Butler Bulldogs. And uh, when you look at it, it's pretty much, as they've been saying on CBS, it's going to be a road game for Duke because anybody outside of Durham is rooting for Duke. And probably me, I'm rooting for Duke because uh, reasons y'all won't understand. I'm a turf at heart, but I, bl I bleed blue. But uh, I will say this, though. Duke is used to going on the road in big environments and big games and performing well. So I don't think this atmosphere is going to be a problem for them at all. I mean, they go to the likes of Maryland, which is... I'm a Terp, and I know how bad they get it there. They been, they went to the Wisconsin, which is a tough place to play, of course, and they lost, but they still played them really tough. Everywhere they go, it's always a sellout. It's always loud. It's always it's always an exciting environment wherever Duke goes. But they're Duke, and they can and they they're used to that. So let me give you some of the reasons why Butler can win this game. Butler is a strong, strong, strong defensive team. The way they, even though Michigan State had their problems with the ball handlers, they were in their face all night. They made sure that Lucius wasn't comfortable. They made sure Delvin Rowe didn't have any prop, uh, couldn't get anything done, and De uh, Darrell Summers was not to be found anywhere. And he's their best player. And they play their to their best strength is they play that half court game. They slow the pace down. They don't t they don't take shots till probably about inside 10 seconds of the shot clock. And uh, Gordon Hayward probably the Probably is going to be the best player on the floor tonight. That kid, that kid can pretty much do everything. He's good size. I think he's about 6'9", 6'10". He can shoot the three well. He's like a poor man's version of, I don't know, let's say uh, Kyle Singley. And they're probably going to be matched up tonight. And it's going to be an interesting matchup at that. So if Butler, can, if Butler can find a way to keep that pace extremely, extremely slow, I think they have a really, really, really good chance of winning tonight. Now, why Duke can pro uh, can probably win. Duke is big. They're bigger. They're bigger than I thought. Going into that game against West Virginia, I thought West Virginia was big, long, athletic, and that Duke just couldn't match up with them. How wrong was I? I mean, when they're hitting shots like that, and their length didn't bother them at all. They, when they had those first three or four shots blocked going into the game, they kept attacking and attacking and attacking. And that's how Duke's got to approach this slow-paced defense if they're going to win this game. And uh, Zubek on the boards, and him and Lance Thomas have to keep contributing with those uh, second-chance points and those second-chance three-point opportunities because that's pretty much how they killed West Virginia last night. Zubek was so much bigger than his matchup. He could just, he didn't even really have to get off the floor and just swat it back. And then John Shire or Nolan Smith or Kyle Singler were sitting out there wide open for a three. And that's the last thing you need is those any of those three uh, popping off because when they uh, step into that jump shot, money all day, man. But one thing people don't realize about Duke, they can either play fast with you or they can play slow with you. They can go to the half-court game and still spread you out and find mismatches and get to the basket and create fouls and foul shots and create drive and kick. That's where John Shire kills people. He's re he's really good at the driving dish. He, you can't speed him up. He plays at the pace that he wants to play at, and he doesn't get frustrated or anything. He's a real tough. He's a solid point guard. Will it translate to the NBA? Probably not. But I'm telling you what, man. You're going to see how how good they are tonight. If they if they play like they did against West Virginia, it's going it's not even going to be an interesting national championship. I tell that tell you that right now. But the key thing to look at tonight in the national championship, the big X factor matchup, if Butler decides to go man to man, which I don't think they should because they're so outsized, and like they did against K State, they made them shoot their way out, of, make them shoot their way out of the zone. Matt Howard going against Brian Zubek. Howard has a concussion, and uh, Zubek's playing possessed right now. Since the month of January, he's been just he's been doing his job and he's been doing it well. But Matt Howard's going to have to be faster. He's going to have to put a body on him. He's going to have to get those, prevent those second-chance opportunities. And we're going to have to see how well he can match up with that concussion. Hey, man, it's a national championship. What was it, the water boy? Can't hold anything back now. All right, man, uh, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. And unfortunately, I'm probably going to talk about that stupid trade the Redskins made within the division. Now, well, it's not really the Redskins' fault. They capitalized. But they, there's no real positive in it for them. And uh, going to talk talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about going to talk about opening day yesterday, and how Pujols dropped out two homers. But uh, all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Enjoy that national championship. I know I will. Go Duke.